All right, everyone. This is Dr. Jason Hahn with HealthFit Physical Therapy and Chiropractic. We're located in Pasadena, California. I am joined with Aloysia Gavre. Um, she is the owner and artistic director of Troop Vertigo and Cirque School LA. Um, she's toured internationally as a circus artist starting at the age of 18. She joined Cirque du Soleil at the age of 23. And you've been doing circus stuff for performing wise for over 20 years. And now you've really dedicated your life, your mission to, to helping, to teaching, to um, creating um, stuff in the community so people can learn the beauty of Cirque. And um, thank you for being here. I am excited to have you. Um, it's an honor. Can you, besides what I told everyone, can you tell them a little bit more about yourself? Sure. So um, I grew up in San Francisco and I had the opportunity to train circus arts as a child. Um, I never thought it would become a career. I was doing a lot of things. I had a lot of interest, but it definitely sparked something at the, about the age of 14. Um, we were honored with a guest coach from Nanjing, China, who came to be, work with us at the Pickle Family Circus. Um, and that pretty much changed everything, my whole trajectory. Uh, his name is Master Lu Yi. He has had the same sort of influence that he's had on my life on many other people in my industry. He is really our guru, our mentor, our, our leader as, as far as um, helping bring the circus arts to a different level within America because we're a little bit slower than other countries. Um, and his dedication to each student and their individual progress along with them each student showing their individual passion is what made you want to work so hard um, and when he gave you a compliment it stayed with you for at least a week and you worked hard for the next one so he was an incredibly powerful um, inspiration in my life and he's the one who really gave me the, um, the confidence that maybe there was a career possibility um, before I ever thought there was, I was about to go to UCLA at 18 and join the dance theater department. And that summer before I left to Los Angeles from San Francisco, uh, that local circus, Pickle Family Circus, asked if I'd come and audition to be an apprentice for a year. I got the role. I was so excited, but I said, I'm going to college. And I talked to the professors at UCLA and they said, why not defer for a year? You know, try this out, see how it goes and you can come back. And I never went back. I never went at all. <laughs> yeah. So from 18 to 43, I have spent m many years, months, weeks, minutes on the road traveling. So that um, ena somehow enabled a career for myself that um, I'm very humbled by and very shocked that uh, I happened to grow up in an era where circus was starting to be recognized as art and a viable career. Um, that wasn't the case, you know, 10 years prior. So now, now the climate is obviously completely different. Um, circus as fitness, circus as, as a career and as an art form has grown and exploded. Um, and I'm happy that uh, hopefully I've contributed to that. Right. And then I, in my former life, I, I used to work for a circus as a, as a physio. And even before I joined Cirque, I didn't have a total understanding or a total appreciation for circus and what it brings to the table. And, and I think um, from the outside, it is fascinating, right? You're, you're watching a show. It's like, wow, how can these people do this? Right. And then, and like anything, it is, it's fitness, it's a sport, it's a passion. And one thing I learned while being with Cirque is because I was so used to like team sports, you know, like football, soccer, and you basically train to win a match, to win the game. And with, an, with performing arts, it's really individualized. And to have that sense of, of passion and just pure grit to do your best every single time, that is very, very hard to find in what, when I would consider normal sports. Because it's like you're not... If you're performing on stage, unless you're doing a competition, but your biggest competition is yourself, which I found fascinating. And, and then when people ask me, like, what's the difference? I'm like, that's probably the biggest thing. Like, like from, from my eyes, I was like, it, it looked good, you know, <laughs> but to them, it's like, oh, I messed Never. up here. I did this. And then, 
it's like in a way it's kind of like golf you're striving for perfection every single time so that's one thing i appreciated uh, of at least living the life a bit and then when i opened up practice i was able to work with some um circ artists some circ athletes and that's how i got to meet you so you know um can you and that's tell all, that's <laughs> all from referrals right because you right. worked with an artist and uh iris and then I was in trouble and I needed somebody and the referral came and it went, I went right to you. And then I was like, he is the man. He healed me. <laughs> and please go. So again, back to like, I don't know, the, these circles of connecting the dots. It's, it's so much about how our health, our health is affected and how we need to rely on trusted people. And so it's always from referrals that that happens with. So I'm very grateful that you're in my life. No, I appreciate it. And then, um, a lot of the artists that I've, that we've gotten to work with are from Cirque School. Can you tell us a little bit more about about that? Sure. So um, when I so after my long contract with Cirque du Soleil, and we talk about um, you just spoke about being competitive with yourself, or that you're ne you never feel like you've you've done the best job you can, and that's a great sort of passion and drive to ensure that you do your ten shows a week. And mm -hmm. it can feel very repetitious, right? Besides the city maybe being different or the audience being different, it's not like you're working with another team that you're competing against in athletics. So for me, it was really time for me to retire from Cirque du Soleil when I wasn't having that feeling that you were talking about. It was the monotony uh, was starting to actually be dangerous within my body because I was starting to think about something else mm -hmm. instead of what I needed to specifically be thinking about, which was I'm hanging upside down, I'm 60 feet in the air, and you need to focus for these five minutes. And after yeah. <laughs> five or six years, that just became too difficult. So I made a transition to Los Angeles at that time. And also during my tenure with Cirque du Soleil, they uh, trained me to be their Pilates coach on the on the road. So okay. I worked um, with the physio, two physiotherapists, um, and also with the head physiotherapist in Montreal and came up with a plan of how can we help the artists both number one, warm up prior to the show and also help with injury prevention. So as we know, when Cirque du Soleil, you have a contract, you hope that there's not going to be a surgery or an injury that's going to disrupt that contract. So what's the best way to do that is through injury prevention and Pilates and physiotherapy going together made that happen. For some reason, I exhibited some sort of drive or ambition for this. And I'm so glad that that was recognized before even I saw it because it was definitely life-changing in numerous ways. And one of the most ways that it really transitioned for Cirque is Pilates in the circus style of Pilates. So it's a very much more athletic approach and realistic approach, but it gave me an opportunity to see how circus training could become circus fitness with a Pilates integration so mm -hmm. that it was done in a more safe and uh, uh, with a focus on alignment and the correct musculature, which circus training in general is very as you probably know, it's very harsh, rugged, and raw on the body. We are used to so many random injuries, and that's just part of the game. We do push our bodies to the extreme because it's it's an adrenaline rush for us, and we yeah. love it. But for the general public, if I was going to open up a school in our title, a circ school for anybody with any body, I really wanted to make sure that there weren't any barriers, that everybody could have this experience to hang by their knees, to invert upside down and hold themselves in a handstand. And one day you're holding a handstand by yourself. You don't need the wall anymore. And it's just so exhilarating when that happens. But if I could integrate the, the consciousness and the mindfulness of Pilates and physio work into it, then I felt like I was going to enable a safe way for anybody to take hold and learn this. And so for them to go on to their normal jobs, right? For us as circus artists, injuries are par for the course, but you know, for an animator or a doctor or a nurse or a barista, that's not the case. So Cirque School really came out of a, a desire to share what I have, my passion, my love for what the circus arts has done for me and the, and the adrenaline of the physical rush along with the mindfulness to it. So we've been going on now for 11 years here in Hollywood. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, it's, I, I'm thinking about, it's been probably like five, six, seven years of, of at least 
working with some of your some of your athletes and and like circus artists do there it's they start to gain a lot more uh, intuitiveness with their bodies and and i think that connection is very important um not only w- for health but even just excelling at, at whatever you want to do so that's one thing i really appreciated and then and even like when we work with performing artists i even have to talk a different way you know it's more of a connection way it's not like oh does your arm do this it's like do you feel do you flow do you do these things and then if you parallel that to even how you're supposed to move through life you know it's 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 kind of interesting and beautiful in how they work together um can you tell me a little bit more of it's interesting about or, or go ahead what you're saying about language it's different like how we talk to circus artists is different than how we also talk to the general public when they're doing circus classes right it, mm-hmm. when when as circus artists we know when we what kind of pain we have we know when the pain is going to subside within 24 hours we know if it's a new pain we know if it's a reoccurring injury that we need to get attention right away and when you're teaching the general public it's that's a very hard thing to assess. Yes, there is pain behind the knees when you hang by the trapeze bar or the calluses mm-hmm. and so forth, but then you have back pain. Okay, well, you know, us as as movers and trapeze artists and contortionists, we know how to embrace that pain or if it needs to get checked up right away. So that's something interesting that you're keying into. Um, can you give me some examples of like how does someone even come and see you like what makes them decide to start uh circus arts as a student or as a professional as a student like someone coming through your doors like give me give me a good story like (laughs) i think that circus what what we're teaching is yes it's circus fitness but you're learning circus art and then you're getting super fit on the side so yes it feels so great to like see your body change and develop but we're also there because of the arts sector that it brings to us and the and the possibility to do performances so we offer many showcases and recitals and uh workshops and performance and so forth um but i think that in general the sector of circus fitness kind of attracts people who are not as comfortable just to go into a gym either they're they're bored of it they've had that experience or they feel like it's exclusive or they also are those those types of people who maybe never succeeded in PE and they mm. have the, like those sort of um, memories in, in themselves still. I think that what we really strive for is arms, like wherever you're at, you don't need to get fit before you come to surf school. That's a real misnomer. Like I need to get in shape. So I look good in my outfit so I can go to the gym and be on the treadmill or take my hit class. Like, no, right. what, wherever you are right now, there are so many modifications and progressions that you just build slowly. You just have to just be present with yourself and accept where you are because we will accept you. Mm-hmm. And then we've been fortunate fortunate enough to work with not only just the artists, but also uh, some of the coaches as well. And then uh, how much your coaches understand the body and progressions and stuff, that's super important. And to know that, not everyone fits in a certain box. Everyone is unique. Everyone is an individual and you, and you meet them where they're at. And Absolutely. then, you know, that's, that's something I really appreciated of, of everyone over at Cirque School. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about um, just the community that you've built there? Sure. So community is incredibly vital to me and I and I don't know why maybe I really have always found because I spent so much time on the road with the various circuses and traveling it is your family it's your family you spend so much time with each other more than you do with your family and you're all in different environments consistently all the time so you're all everybody's curious at the same time we're hitting a new city we're hitting a new environment where's the cafe what's the yoga studio where's the bar you know there's there's um quick camaraderie the same thing kind of is for just uh recreational circus training because you're all learning something new at the same time Mm. and the level of terror (laughs) that is sometimes (laughs) being taught um you know from 
it could be a basic thing like even an ankle hang, like we're all in this together. Oh, how are you doing it? How are you doing it? There's <laughs> like this mutual, how did you feel safe to let your hands go? It's, it's sure the teacher is offering safe instruction, but sometimes the teacher is so far removed from that first experience that is the experience from the other students, the community at large, that helps each student feel like it's possible. And I yeah. love that. I also love that at Cirque School, there's multiple different classes that are happening at the same time. So it's not like this is exclusive for the advanced class. or this is exclusive mm -hmm. for contortion. There's contortion and trapeze and a beginning stretch class and a beginning aerial one class all at the same time. So not only different skill sets are happening and people are inspired by what they see with other bodies are doing in space, but they're also inspired by different levels. So a beginner is watching an intermediate class. Or an intermediate class can also look at the beginner and say, I remember that day. Yeah. Yeah. That person, <laughs> like, how do you get their shoulders to rotate? You know, like it's such a, that to me is the community. And that is encouraging and beautiful. And I'm so glad that we've been able to sustain it. Very cool. And then, so now, right, we're, we're about a year into COVID. Um, how has that um, affected you and, and, and your community? but also how have you been resilient um, through it all? Because I, I know you have. <laughs> well, that is incredible encouragement. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have been closed for, um, come, yeah, 11 months. It's happened. Yes, we, we uh, March 16th, we, were, we, were, we closed the doors up and we have not reopened. We, I would say, in retrospect, I would say we did a quick pivot to virtual classes, but at the time I felt really panically. Everybody's going to virtual and how do you do circus safely virtual? Like how can that happen? I'm not comfortable, I'm not comfortable. So I took about six weeks to do a lot of research. Uh, I took a lots of different classes um, from all over the world, which is great because that can happen now. And I became a student and I just realized, oh, this, this modality, this skill set is being taught in a way that I feel safe with. Oh, I, I like this. I like this. You know what? We spend so much time. But sometimes we get pressure from our students. I want to learn these tricks. I want to learn these tricks. And sometimes we don't do the focus that we need from what you offer, Jason, which is like mm -hmm. really understanding the deep un anatomy of the body and understanding that if we can take this time in virtual classes where we're not distracted by everything around us and focus on, on training smarter and healthier for our body now, I didn't know if it was going to be a month, two months, however many <laughs> we get back. We're going to be smarter aerialists, hand balancers, contortionists, just smarter bodies. So that's been an actual very interesting pivot for us. And, and the classes that we've offered are really varied from uh, a cardio hit class to uh, superpower Pilates to flexi fit to contortions to handstands to pull up bar conditioning. So it was a wide um, array. And I have to tell you that many of our students ask like, but when you open up, you're not going to stop these, are you? <laughs> oh, that's great. So that's wonderful that it's they're finding it to be useful in their lives and something that they want to continue going even when we do open. Yeah, that it's definitely um I'm I'm big on creating certainty out of an uncertain situation. And then you you looked at uh the yes, you could go virtual, but now what are the opportunities within virtual? And and ultimately it's to keep um your community safe, strong. And then so when you are able to come in person, you're gonna be like taking off. You're not like 10 steps behind. So I think that's very, very valuable in, in just from a business aspect, number one, but number two for your actual clients, it's, it's huge. Um, so where do you, where do you see this going? Let, let's say we, let's say we start to open up a little bit inside. Where, where do you see Cirque School going from here? I think that we'll we'll start with um, offering small private duet trio classes for those who are, who also can afford it because not only we are in pandemic or economic strife like this is heavy and it's heavy for us as a business to be able to stay open and I can't believe we still have our space I and mean, we've done a really good job at at um, ensuring that we do have um, our home and our community to open back up to. Um, but that would be the safest ways to go little by little. And then instead, sadly, instead of having five classes in the space at once, it'll go to one class at a time. 
and mm -hmm. the space is big enough at 6,000 square feet. We have multiple points in the air, so people can be 12, 15 feet apart. Um, but as a business model, that's going to still be tough because we were based on having, we were successful because we had those five classes at once. And so now it'll be one <laughs> half hour break, clean, mm -hmm. sanitize in the next. And so it will be less, but I think it's the safest way, both for the coaches and for our community at large. Yeah, I think that's one of the challenges sometimes people don't understand about um, the business owner. Or, you know, it's like at, at, at the end of the day, we have to not go in the red. We have to stay profitable, um, not necessarily to pay ourselves, but in order to take care of like everyone that works here. And, and like you, you know, you, you have a team. And probably the, the hardest thing when COVID hit was we weren't thinking about ourselves. We were thinking about all the all of our team members and family that in a way we're responsible for their families and their food and their, and I, and I think sometimes that uh, that's lost. And, and then I, I thank you for actually sharing that part because it's, it's not shared enough. And, and it's, and for you to, uh, you have to change the model a little bit once you reopen. But I, what I truly feel is that, your clients love you and they're, they will, they're going to do whatever it is to get back in there. And, and then hopefully this pandemic continues to dissipate and whatnot. And then your place will be in a much better state from there. So, you know, thank you for that confidence. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have confidence in, in you and, and everyone I've run across that has trained with you or taught for you. And, and, and to that liking is like, that's the place to be. Circus school is a place to be. And not only from a circus standpoint, but like just the environment and the family and they live, breathe circus. It's, it's, it's kind of cultish. <laughs> I can't believe how many of them there are. I mean, it, it's that way for me, but I didn't expect it to be that way for so many other people. Right. And it really is. It's a second family. It's a second home. And then it, it must be, tough not being able to see it. Uh, yeah we can zoom and stuff like that but i think just having that like when you're on tour having that togetherness is yeah. um it's missed but it, it'll come back I, I have confidence in that we're doing um, kind of a fun thing right now in our virtual because we know how often our our home life is part of our um virtual fitness experience and what happens is children come in and animals come in and we're really starting to embrace that. And now we know, <laughs> you know our, our friends' children's names because they take away the blocks or they take away the ball or they take away the resistance band. And then, you know, this is life and it's beautiful. Or, the, you know, the, the kitty cat is trying to knock over <laughs> the, hand, the woman standing on her hands and, you know, just kind of the tails and the nose. We see it all. We're all That's there awesome. on gallery. We're all there on gallery. That's one thing that's really nice. Being on gallery view, we are all there together. It's not just the coach. Once you get a hang of it, and as, soon, as long as the language is clear, you don't need to see the coach big. You want to see everybody that you're hanging out with. And then you see all the challenges of the animals and the kids and the partners coming <laughs> in. And, you know, it's that that does make it feel like it's a, a, a family. How many of your of your clients have like aerial setups? Oh, um, <laughs> I was always because sometimes I see on Instagram, I was like, okay, you have one. Um, <laughs> not that many. I would say maybe five or ten. Okay. Those are probably those are probably ones I follow and see like hand balancing and all this kind of stuff. It's it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so to learn more about you, um, and to have our, our clients and our viewers, you know, know Aloysia. If you could turn back time and talk to your 18 year old self, what would you tell? Um, I would probably say not to worry so much about making the wrong decision in my life. And maybe because I didn't go to college, um, it wasn't as clear like what, as a circus artist, what goes next. And I had different opportunities or lack of opportunities come in during my 25 year career. And I really um, spent too much time stressing out if I was making a regrettable decision. And I think 
Sure, there can be regrets, but nothing is regrettable. You just move with what feels right. As long as you're like at peace with how it affects the rest of your life and your family and you really take a moment. Um, I think I've lost, I, I probably gained a few wrinkles at the age of 22 and 28 and 34 <laughs> from those moments. Yeah, I, I think we definitely look back and like, oh, like you said, you're just, you can keep, your biggest uh, adversary is yourself many, many times, whether it's like in business, whether it's you're trying to work on a trick, like, okay, do I let go? Cause I don't, I don't feel safe, you know? And, and, and it's interesting how when we look back, those are the things that, that rise to the top of our head when we think about it. It's, it's cool. Um, is there, if you can step into my shoes, is there anything I didn't ask you that you would like to ask yourself? Oh, your shoes. Yeah. Um, how how have I made your life better, Aloysia? <laughs> and to me, how have you made my life better? No, I'm going to tell you how you made my life better. Oh, oh you don't have to talk I'm about so, that. So <laughs> we should at some point. Oh, let's go well, for it. If you want to um, share, yeah. I found you in the latter part of my career. So just as I was trailing out of full-time performing and I had some um, uh, elbow issues, elbow pain that was stopping me from fully extending my elbows. So one goes all the way hyperextended and the other one I still can jams up. And I had a contract coming up a few an act that I could adapt, but um, just in general, as an aerialist hanging upside down, you don't want to you don't want to feel like you can't use your full arm to keep you safe. And yeah. I'm so grateful that Ube sent me to you. And we did I don't know we did some intense sessions, and you got me backstage ready. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was petrified. It's very different being. Um, a ground artist and being somebody in the air where the, the risks that we take, it takes a toll on your mental health in a, in a slightly different way, not to belittle fear that I had post seeing you and after was really dissipated. You gave me that confidence. And the other thing is that uh, I don't think I ever told you about, I finished that those shows and that last show that I did after you had treated me, I, that was my last show ever. Uh, three oh, years wow. ago. That was my last show. And I didn't tell anybody in the show. And I didn't even know that it was my last show until I was in, in that experience until I was there on stage, having that moment. I didn't, that's when the realization came. This is your last show. Alicia. Wow. And I didn't tell anybody at all. For, it was very clear to me that my, my body just needed to retire my performance body, not my teaching body, not my everyday body, but the performance body it was like, it was a point in time when you kind of know that like, whew, I'm really glad, really glad that I lasted that long and that I've had that much success in my life. You're going to end right now. Wow. It was very sobering and clear. And I am incredibly thankful for you for guiding me to that place so that I could finish off healthy and happy and know that I'm moving on to the next sector. Wow. I appreciate it. I didn't know. Um, I'm grateful to be part of that journey and, 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 and it ended on a good note, at least it seemed. And yeah, I, I think the beauty of, of what we do from a healthcare perspective or whatnot is, is, is the connection and then having a part in your story. And, and, and I think that having the time to build that connection is huge. Um, and at least the setting that we've created here, we're not like running through like four or five people during the hour. We, we try to connect with one person at a time and it's hopefully to have moments like that. And, and I'm thankful and grateful that you shared that with me. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, okay. So how can um, our listeners find out more about Cirque School, where to contact you? What do you have going on? Sure. So just, uh, website, cirqueschool.com. We're also all over Facebook and Instagram. You can be inspired by the other students and, and happenings. Um, we have, so yeah, we have over 15 
day. Um, you'll notice that we mark them as a 101, which is entry, all levels, beginners to professionals. So totally open to all, all types of um, desires and bodies or 102. And 102s are just have a, free, a few prerequisites. So either you need to have splits or you need to be able to already hold the handstand for a minute against the wall or that, 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 that. So you can, you can check those out. And we're also doing some really fun community events. Some of them are called Gratitude Friday, See Us Together, and they're free. Um, we are doing one um, coming up called Mindfulness Meditation. Really trying to, yeah, breathe, calm it down, just like be focused on where we are right now. We did a lot, one last month, which was a medley of four different coaches teaching over one hour. So wow. you got to go through a warm up and a cardio and Pilates and a stretch. And that was really fun. And then we did virtual happy hour after. Nice. And we're also doing this really fun event for <laughs> visual artists. So we're doing this um, monthly event called Virtual Cirque Life Drawing. So we take our coaches and other uh, professional circus artists and we they become the models of a traditional life drawing class. So this is for visual, a circus body holding a shape from one minute to 10 minutes. Wow. And they get to sketch and draw like just be in their 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 the visual artists are inspired by what we're doing and we're equally inspired by their interpretation of us so it's a whole beautiful next level um model of artists inspiring artists so that's been incredibly fun for us as well that's really cool and then we'll make sure that we share your links check out Cirque school see see the amazing things that they're doing and and in, Really, it is truly inspiring watching not only the the high level kind of stuff, but looking at the ones that are starting from the bottom and how they're building themselves up. And it's like to to achieve things that you never thought you would be able to do. That's huge, not only for you physically, but mentally. And and I think and I, I know we need that, especially during with what everyone is, is going through right now. So I thank you for your time. Um, like always, it's great connecting and we will share everything with our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. Big hug. All right. See you soon. Bye.